Here is the grocery store, toy grocery store. It's got a real working conveyor belt. Turn it on. When it gets to the end of the conveyor belt, it automatically stops. It's got a scanner, laser scanner, so we can scan it. And the software shows us what we're buying and how much it costs. Then for the customer, there's a screen that shows your total. And when you press pay, it says scan card now. You scan it and it says it's paid and you're ready for the next customer. That's the grocery store. And if you don't want to build the entire conveyor belt system and cabinet, you can still have a lot of fun with just the barcode scanner and the magnetic card reader. So I set up this website, notrealpointofsale.com and it has some instructions on which scanners to buy and where the website is and hopefully you can have a lot of fun with just just that and for the remainder of this video I'll go through how to act I actually built the cabinet and conveyor built here is the grocery store with the panel off so we can take a look at how I made all of this I'll start with the conveyor belt uh, we have two real conveyor belt rollers that I got off Amazon. They're just steel drums on bearings. And they're 10 inches wide. The belt I made, and if I turn turn this on, I can you can see the find the seam. Where I just started with a 10-foot sheet of rubber, it's 10 inches wide, and Cut it at an angle and glued it together with super glue. And I made it so it's the belt is all one unit. And so if you need to repair it for some reason, just unplug. Unplug that and then the whole thing. The whole thing slides out. And it's quite heavy. But then you can go, we can take a better look at it over here. So there's, here is our, well, let's look at the servo first. Look at the bottom. Let's try to get in here with some light. So the servo, I don't know if you can see, yeah, the servo is right in behind this panel. And it's a, a high torque metal gear servo that's been modified for continuous operation. So where a normal servo would, you know, travel from one end to, to the other, it has a limited range. This has been modified to just keep turning. And this little potentiometer uh, usually tells the servo what the position is. But now, since I've modified it, it just tells it uh, how fast and what direction to turn the motor. And then this is a RC model airplane wheel that I've attached to one of the, the circular servo horns that the servo came with. And then um, I originally thought that maybe just the wheel pressing up against the rubber would ha give it enough friction to catch the rubber and, and turn it, but it's not. So I actually had to put this tensioner in and this is just a, an oak dowel. And I'll get some more light maybe. Yeah, an oak dowel with, uh, this is a, some plumbing fitting, it's a piece of plastic. Uh, and I made some so this, this spins, this part spins, 
but these do not. These are just to keep the plastic from walking off in the direction. And a nice happy mistake that I made was that this dowel is actually not straight, it's actually bowed. So you can, by rotating it, it's not glued in, you can rotate it and adjust the tension on of this against the wheel. So you can, if you rotate it, the bow comes up and it pretty much lifts off completely from the wheel and you can, or you can turn it the other way and it'll push really hard. So it's somewhere in between. And put it back in, pick it up, and slide it back in. And hook up the wires to the servo. All right, so there's the conveyor belt back in there and I've hooked up the wires again. So the next thing we can talk about is the laser. There's a laser diode, five volt laser diode on this side and it shoots across to a uh, laser detector. It also runs off five volts. So when the, when the detector detects the laser, it means we can run. So let me, I'll turn on the conveyor belt. When it's interrupted, so the detector's not getting any laser light now, now it, it shuts off the belt. And that's all controlled through the Arduino. One thing I did uh, figure out was that the laser can't, it can be run off the Arduino 5 volt power supply. However, the servo draws a lot of current, which would cause the laser to dim out, which would give it a false reading on the, as, as though something were blocking it. And then it would, uh, would stop the servo. The light would get brighter and it would think it was um, supposed to be running. So it would start the servo and then it, so it would get this on off, on off feedback loop because of the, the current draw of the servo. So I ended up having to supply the laser diode with its own five volt power supply. So there's two five volt wall warts back behind the computer over here. One for the servo, one for the yeah Arduino and servo, and one for the laser diode. And turn that off. And the computer See if it will wake up when I scan. Yeah. Go again. Yeah, so the the scanner is really just it acts like a keyboard. And when you scan something, it's as though someone was typing in the UPC number and then pressing enter. So the software is really just listening for those key events and when it gets an enter it goes out and looks for an, an image and possibly a price. And if the price, it doesn't, we don't have a price, we just make up one because this is just for fun. It's an old Windows 10 laptop, but you really could use anything, uh, Raspberry Pi, because it's this, the software is just run a website. So you just go open your browser and go to this website. And the, card reader also acts like a keyboard so you'd come over, come over here and look at what you bought and it shows you how much total is in your card how many how much it's going to cost and you press pay on the touch screen it tells you to scan your card so you use any magnetic card will work you scan it. It says you paid, and then it it starts over. So now now the cart's empty, and they're ready for the next customer. And the display is a it's a five inch touchscreen, HDMI, and powered by USB. And the USB also allows you to do the touch touch events. I did it. I did have to do a little setup in Windows to get it to uh, 
uh, touch the right screen. It was actually trying to send the touch events to the other monitor. So you, you can configure that in Windows settings. But that's about it for the grocery store. It was a lot of fun to put together. It was first time using a table saw, so ne that was a new learning experience for me. I'm slowly getting better with it.